these days it would cost you $75,000 to buy a brand new fully loaded Chevrolet Tahoe or even a fully loaded Ford F-150 truck. That's what it costs to buy a mid-sized German sedan. But could you buy something way cooler for that amount of money? Absolutely, and that's the kind of thing we love here. And in talking about a $75,000 budget, there's a lot of logical Porsche choices, some great Ferrari choices, some Mercedes and things like that. But for me, I can't think of anything that would top my nicely sorted flood title Lamborghini Gallardo Spider. I bought it for about 60, I've got about 75 in it now, and I love the car. It's a gated manual, it's very special, it looks terrific, drives great now, and I can't imagine replacing it with anything else for that kind of money. But I was curious what my friends would would choose and these were their answers for seventy five thousand dollars i would buy a 2003 aston martin vanquish v12 now you might say well that's only a forty thousand dollar car it is because it has the worst transmission in the world i would take the rest of the money send it to aston martin works for a six-speed manual conversion because i am nuts for sticks but when i got sick of the lack of quality and reliability in an aston martin i would sell it and buy a Porsche 997 GT3 because it's the greatest driver's car ever made. Okay, so today we have a working budget of 75,000 US dollars. So that's about 100K Canadian, exactly. Uh, so I didn't have to think of this one myself. It was actually my son who always called it my race car. Um, so I guess I would be going ahead and buying back my... 2016 Porsche GT4 which was the 981 uh, and basically had less than 15,000 kilometers on it. Uh, it's actually available for sale right now if somebody wants to get to it before me. I do have a new version of the GT4 coming, but uh, this, the 981 was very fun. We're backstage with the Motor Trend Group to let you know what I would buy for $75,000. I'd go with a C8 stripper. Maybe you can't find it right now, but soon enough, Bottom price, Corvette C8, base model. That's a lot of car for $75,000 or less. Uh, my choice is a 2009 Audi R8 V8 with stasis package. A beautiful, brilliant red on black leather. It's over $60,000 in upgrades, including a Whipple supercharger and KW adjustable suspension. It's one of 238 manuals built in this year, and it only has 34,000 miles. For 75,000 bucks, I would go with the Mercedes AMG E63S wagon. I think bang for the buck, the thing goes zero to 60 in like what, three seconds or so. It's got all wheel drive, room for the kids and the dog, and you can take it to a track day, enjoy it on the back roads, all around, probably one of the best cars for the money. Oh, hello. Um, I was uh, doing some research. Now, uh, what I have found in my uh, said research is that if you were to buy a car for $75,000, it would not be a sports car. It would not be a car that uh, would go fast or anything like that. As a matter of fact, if you want sophistication, if you want just the mere name of the car to make you seem smarter, more intelligent instantly because it is British and everybody thinks British people are smarter because of their accent, you go with the Jaguar. XK120. A 1951 version has five swoops down the front of it. Hard top version. Of course, you're going to have to repair the English electronics and oiling system, so you just throw an LS motor in it and put around town all day long in your wonderful sophistication, and everybody thinks, gee, who is that dapper man in that fabulous car? It's me in a Jaguar XK120. All right, if we're talking $75,000 cars, hands down, I'm going to say the GT3. If I had to pick a backup, I'd go with a 360, 360 Spider. Both the 360 Spider or the GT3 take a little bit of searching to find one for 75 grand, but when you do, you jump on it. The 360's got the Ferrari factor, the GT3 has the reliability and performance. That's where my money's at. I would say the obvious and logical one I think a lot of people are going to say is a C8 Corvette. But that is a car with a supercar performance, a great sports car. I would actually argue that a Gen 1 R8 V10 for $75,000 is probably the way you want to go. 
So if I had 75 grand to spend on a car, I wouldn't choose anything else other than a Porsche. If you choose anything else, you are absolutely wrong. I mean, you can get one like this and have about 30 grand left over. This is a 911 turbo, but I would choose a 997.2 turbo with PDK. It is the best car you can get for that amount of money. My pick this week comes down to whether or not I think I'm going to stick on a paved road or if I want to be able to go off-road. If I'm sticking to the pavement, this is easy. I'm going to go with the 2014 Cadillac CTS-V wagon tuned by Hennessy. With 750 horsepower, it's one of five in that configuration. Now, if you don't like wagons, that's easy. Go with the 2019 sedan CTS-V with the stock 6.2 liter V8 that makes 640 horsepower. But I think if I was spending my own money this week, what I would probably opt for is the off-road option. And for me, that's gonna be a fully loaded Ford Raptor in Velocity Blue. Now, if you can find one, you should look for a Shelby Baja edition because that's one rad looking vehicle. This week's budget, $75,000. I'm gonna pick the most opulent car you could possibly get. A 2009 Maybach 62S. This car had a sticker price of $450,000. And now you can pick them up for 75 grand. Six liter V12 twin turbo and the most luxurious car you will ever find. A car I really like at the $75,000 price point is an Audi RS7, like this gorgeous blue one behind me. You can tune these things up to run like a low 10 second quarter mile and they fit a lot of stuff in the back. It's like a hatchback design, similar to a Tesla Model S. So I love it. It's utilitarian, it's really fast, and it looks really good. My choice for $75,000 would be a late 70s through 80s uh, Porsche 930 Turbo or a 911 Turbo. Uh, this car is super cool. It was a 3.3 liter air-cooled turbocharged motor that uh, was very minimalistic because this this car is where the term Widowmaker came from because it was such a minimalistic unit with uh, a lot of power for the time and no nannies or aids or tech to kind of, you know, keep you from you know, killing yourself or crashing. That's unfortunately what happened to a lot of these cars. But even today, when you get behind the wheel of a 930, there's a space between 4,000 and 3,500 and like 4,500 RPMs where the boost comes to life and you're like, what decade is this car from? Because it's just freaking amazing. For my $75,000 car, I really thought hard about this one. You could go Nissan GTR, you could go a whole bunch of good tuner platforms to make better later with the money left over if you're going for a $100,000 car. I actually chose the latest Dodge Viper. I've driven every generation of the Viper and when I was about to drive the newest one, I kind of thought I knew what I was going to expect. 8.4 liters of just all motor V10 power and it's just magnificent to drive. It's so aggressive and fun. It has a more raw feeling than a lot of the cars that are coming out today with the rear wheel drive and how much torque this thing has. When it comes to cool factor, fun factor, it is hard to beat the latest generation of the Viper. What I came up with was an early Ferrari California. You can find one of these cars in great condition, reasonable miles for around $75,000. Retractable hardtop, Ferrari GT car, just a great sounding car, fun car to drive, not a lot of maintenance to this vehicle. And for 75 grand, you'll look like 300 grand. $75,000 is way harder than I thought it was going to be. At first I was thinking maybe a Raptor, maybe a wide body Charger Hellcat, but I think I'm gonna have to stick with the old Porsches and get a 964 Carrera 2. When I say this is the most beautiful car in the world, it's not just me saying it because it's British. Enzo Ferrari said the exact same words and I think he's bang on. We are, of course, talking about the Jaguar E-Type, Series 3, 5.3 litre V12. You can pick them up in this country for about £65,000, which would just come in under budget with a bit of a negotiation. Now, being British, I'm obviously a little bit biased, but Jaguars are the most reliable cars known to man, and that is a fact. I've had a little bit of experience with myself. I took one to the States last year and did the Coast to Coast Express. Had no trouble with it, honestly. 
But for me, it would have to be the E-Type and it would be fantastic. You might think that you may not be able to get a gated manual for a $75,000 budget, but you certainly can as long as it has a little bit of higher mileage. Now, higher mileage in Ferrari land means anything more than four or 500 miles a year. So you can definitely find a 360 gated um, for the $75,000 mark in the, uh, if you have it around 30, maybe 40,000 miles, which really equates to about uh, 1,500 or so miles a year, which is really not that much. So, um, fantastic car, uh, 400 horsepower, um, and revs all the way up to 8,500 RPM. car you can buy a variant of this the Porsche GT4 however I would get a Boxster Spider for 75 grand because then my wife would not yell at me and she would ride in the car with me which always makes it easier to have an extra car around all right so budget $75,000 I think we have to go with the AMG GTS probably from 2016 or 17. now I'm a little bit biased because I had one of these cars I bought it pretty close to brand new and they're an absolute steal right now at under $75,000 it has incredible styling that I think rivals the Porsche 911 it has an incredible exhaust note with the bi-turbo v8 from AMG and the interior has all the creature comforts that you want it's hundred percent Mercedes for $75,000, I found a 2009 Dodger Viper SRT10 on Auto Tempest. This Viper is the ACR edition with an 8.4 liter V10, 6-speed manual transmission, and less than 10,000 miles. I'll be honest, at the end of filming Car Trek with the guys, we finished at Amelia Island, where I got to experience something really, really neat, and that is all of the period dress of people pulling up in these beautiful turn-of-the-century, early teens, 20s, 30s classics. It's something that I would love to do, and to do that, I would love to do it in a 1928 Packard 443. This particular one has a custom body by the company Coachworks builder Brewster. This is either the only one noted to ever been built or the only one still existing where they actually shorten the frame a little bit and looking at nata values your average pricing is around fifty thousand dollars with some of the rare examples of a 443 going as much as a hundred this one was listed originally at eighty nine thousand it's actually currently at seventy five thousand and i'm willing to bet we can get it even a little bit cheaper with some shrewd negotiation and that sets us up to go to amelia wearing some fun turn of the century outfit ready to go and get ourselves a little ribbon to take home. I wanna be as uh, unreasonable as possible. Uh, you know that a car is entirely unreasonable when you can go buy the sedan version of it on Los Angeles Craigslist for $21,000, but the wagon version costs three times as much and you can buy one at Canapa. Real M5s have inline sixes. It's the E34 M5 Touring all day and you get it either in the green or in the purple what would i buy for 75 grand i want to tell you what i would buy for 75 grand i'm actually trying to buy hugh hefner's 1940 ford right now and i would offer 75 grand for it in a heartbeat but since that's probably not going to buy it realistically i'd probably get me a c8 corvette and jump on the bandwagon with everybody else this one is uh, a recent market adjustment. I think to get the same car probably would have taken a few more dollars, maybe six months ago. But I'm going to go with recent pricing on this one and say $75,000 would get me into a really nice driver quality, but very clean Ferrari 360 Coupe with a manual gearbox. Um, these cars are very good looking. They are among the more reliable Ferraris, uh, especially if you only count Ferraris that are manual. Their service costs are reasonable. Their running costs are reasonable. They look great. They're very comfortable, even for a taller driver. Uh, the gated shifter is fantastic. They're modern enough that you can use them very frequently. You can put a lot of miles on them. Uh, but they're classic enough that they're starting to be appreciated uh, a little more as a classic. They are sort of at the, at the bottom of their curve, I think, and about to start heading on their way back up. And we have a cat. So there's been a 911 you could pick at pretty much every price range so far, but this is the one for me. 
997 Turbo. Uh, 09 is perfect because it was the crossover year between the Dot 1s and the Dot 2s. So you've got the, the Dot 1 exterior and drivetrain, including the Mesger engine. Uh, also, the Dot 1s were a lot easier to find in manual. They did have them in the Dot 2s, but they're very rare. But you've got the upgraded infotainment system from the Dot 2, which is quite a bit nicer, even 10 years old now. Hey, what's up, guys? PJ here with Exotic Car Hacks. If I had to choose one car that was, hmm, let's see, $75,000, I don't know what I'd pick. Definitely wouldn't be this SVJ, let alone this Alpina that ideally, I think it would have to be this G-Wagon because I think G-Wagons are some of the best SUVs you can buy uh, under really 75 grand, and in many cases, probably one of the best and most epic car you can buy. Uh, this is a matte black one with a red interior and a daily disc. It can be bought, but you can buy a 13, this is a 16, you can buy a 13 for under 75 grand, and it can be matte black and red like this one, and I think they're just great cars. You can get them with low miles, and they've held their value all the time, which basically means they can be hacked and driven for free. So this week for a $75,000 budget, I would buy an Alpine A110 Premier Edition. Uh, it's one of the 1955 cars uh, limited edition they've made for the rebirth of the mark. Uh, so, well, to, to, to make it on the map, I know the guys in the US don't have Alpine in, the, in there, but uh, you can compare to Lotus in the philosophy. It's uh, 252 horsepower, 1103 kilos, uh, very, very efficient. I can tell you a Porsche GT3 RS won't follow you in the Tyranny Pass behind. I'm sorry, Doug. Uh, it's just an amazing car. You have, uh, you, 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 you see it's a premier edition by the rims, uh, the numbered plate in there, and the embroidered uh, seat in there. And, uh, well, this one has a pretty cool, uh, touch in there uh, it was not stuck uh, I wonder who's car is it what's up guys this is my one week old daughter and her name is Mirabella so $75,000 what vehicle would I buy it would be something safe fast and secure for her that will be able to transport everything that we need as a new father so it'd be an Aston Martin Rapide S lots of trunk space um, super fast and fun. That's my choice. $75,000, I would buy a Rolls-Royce Phantom, especially a purple one that's currently for sale on cars and bids. Although, by the time this airs, it's probably sold, hopefully for more than $75,000, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. But Rolls-Royce Phantom, they're, they're awesome. Hey, what's going on everybody? Mike from Max Speed. $75,000 is a bit of a weird price point for me, but if I wanted an old, more connected feeling car, I would go with a gated six-speed manual Ferrari 355 GTS. That car sounds awesome. Or if I wanted a more modern, absolutely raw, visceral, insanely fast track car, I would go with a 2014 Viper GTS. You can get these for a hair over 75. This one is for sale for 77 right now, which you can definitely get for 75 with a little bit of shrewd negotiation. Within the bounds of my mythical $75,000 budget, I could definitely get a 64 or 65 Pontiac GTO, maybe even a convertible. It's always been one of my favorite cars. Love the styling, love the powerful motors, and of course, you know, the boring American car thing that's just one of my favorite things. Then I started thinking a little more, and I was like, wait a minute, you know, $75,000 for a Pontiac. They are rare now, but that's uh, on some level offensive to me. So I thought some more. I'm Italian-American, and so is the Di Tommaso Pantera. And that's kind of like the best of both worlds. You've got Carrozzeria Bella and a big, powerful Ford muscle motor. What's not to like? I drive it every day. The car that's usually in this spot in my garage is a 2017 Volvo XC90. And you can pick up Volvo XC90s for around $75,000 new, loaded, has really nice leather, awesome technology, and I really love the car. And it's one of the safest cars ever made. But this is fantasy land. Why would you go buy a normal Volvo XC90 for your money? What you should buy is a 
Defender, because Defenders are just cool. You should buy um, an NAS or an NA. So in the North American market, the market on these are going up and they're really cool. They break all the time. Doug DeMuro has one, but you know what? I don't care. I would go out and get one of these things, drive it around all over the place. I love them. I think they're the coolest SUV ever made. And if I ever came into more money, I could turn them into an absolute beast with a V8 swap, total leather interior, full makeover. Defenders, just cool. Go spend 75 grand on that. There's not much more fun you can have with that. So guys, for 75,000 US dollars uh, in this lockdown, I should probably invest in a beard cut and a haircut. Uh, but I would actually go for a Hellcat. They do a red eye, wide body Hellcat. I think it's pretty cool. None of them are here in the UK. So uh, yeah, probably go for that. What would I buy for 75 grand? I got two cars with that number. One, give me a late 80s Di Tommaso Pantera. One of those GT5 S's with big flared fenders and the big wing in the back. Awesome Italian styling with a big old Ford 351 Cleveland motor in it. Sounds like an American hot rod. Looks like an Italian supercar. Always love those things. And the other car for 75 grand, you can get a real nice one. Porsche 997 Turbo with a six speed. Great cars, great out of the box. Great everyday car, does everything well. And if you want to spend a few more bucks, you can make a ton of power with those things. My buddy Joe Santos at AIM Performance in New Jersey, his has got over 1300 horsepower. He's doing 60 to 130 times in 3.2 seconds. That'll blow away anything that's coming off the line today. If I was just gonna get one car as an all-in-one, I would definitely get a BMW M5 V8 Twin Turbo or Mercedes E63 S. Both are so much fun and have incredible amounts of power on hand that you really don't even need in a city car, but they're just a blast. If I was getting a second car, I would choose a Porsche Cayman GT4 from 2016, a car that I had and is very near and dear to me. I think it's probably the most fun Porsche you can get for the money, even more fun than a GT3 RS. It's just an incredible car and it's very reasonably priced and very reliable. If you wanted to get something a little more wild, I would even consider the CLK Black Series from 2008. It looks like a DTM car, sounds like a muscle car, and drifts around like a cool looking car. Thank you guys, great answers as always. If you've got a better idea of how we should spend 75,000 imaginary dollars, please let us know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. Next week will be our last one. It's money no object. What is that outright dream car? So be sure to tune in next Friday for that video. But we'd like to thank Extreme Experience for sponsoring this video and this month of VinWiki Car Stories. Extreme Experience gives you the chance to not spend 75 or 300 or $400,000. You get to drive your dream car for just a few hundred bucks on one of the most amazing racetracks around America. They've got a fleet of Ferraris, Lamborghinis, McLarens, and Porsches, Corvettes, anything that you could possibly dream of, you can drive it today. So be sure to check out their link in the description below for a discount. And before too terribly long, you can be behind the wheel of the car of your dreams.